Hey guys, it's Laurel Ann. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. It's getting quite cold outside, and as sad as it makes me feel, I can no longer deny that summer is over and autumn is here. For a long time, I said that autumn was my favorite season, but in the last few years, come to accept the fact that I am a summer girl. I do still really appreciate autumn culture, but it's just, it's not my favorite. Part of that, I think, is the fact that I moved to Scotland where autumn doesn't really exist. It's just like pre-winter. So to mark and mourn the end of this beautiful summer, I've decided to make a favorites video. I know that influencers usually make like a seasonal favorites video at the beginning so that you can do the things, but I'm not an influencer, so I'm just gonna talk about things that I really enjoyed during the last like three to four months. I'm counting May as being part of the summer because it felt like summer to me because I finished school like in April. So anyway. Hi guys, it's editing Laurelan. Sorry if you can hear the washing machine. I am just popping in here to apologize for the fact that this entire video is going to be out of focus. Um, I tried so hard and it looked so crisp in my eyeballs, but obviously I didn't have it quite right. Normally I would reshoot the video, but I really don't want to. So um, click away if the focus or lack thereof rather offends you. That's all. Enjoy your day. Bye. <laughs> I had a lot of really amazing experiences this summer. I had the opportunity to travel quite a lot. I went to Ukraine, Poland, France, as you saw. I traveled a bit in the UK. But I think my favorite trip of the summer was one I took in early June with Stephen. We went to the Faroe Islands, which is an archipelago of about 30 islands between Scotland and Iceland. It was absolutely an incredible trip. It was really expensive, but it was so beautiful and peaceful and the people were absolutely lovely and it was just like really different. Um, and the best part, at least for me, of that trip was a trip we took on the first full day. We took a ferry out to the island of Mykines, which is one of the smallest islands that has a permanent population of 10. And we went on a long hike there all the way to the tip of the island. We were blessed with incredible weather and we saw thousands and thousands of puffins, which was an absolute dream. Like I cannot tell you how thrilling it was to be in this puffin colony. They're so cute and um, it was great and we had a picnic lunch right on the very tip of the island overlooking the sea and it really felt like being on the edge of the world and it was just like, oh, such a beautiful moment. That's an experience that will definitely stay with me for the rest of my life. My favorite food of the month um, is this vegan like Thai coconut curry soup that um, I made a couple of times from Budget Bites. This is my favorite food blog by the way. If you're trying to get into cooking and you're like not good at it, you should check this out because all of her recipes are great and easy and cheap. Anyway, um, so this soup, probably not the healthiest thing because it has a whole bunch of coconut milk in it, but it's really delicious. I made it a few times and um, every time I would make it and it would last me like four or five days of lunch and dinner so you get like a huge amount of food out of it and it also just looks really pretty. Yeah, that's been my favorite thing. I'm probably gonna make that again soon. When it comes to beauty, I'm like really low maintenance. I kind of know what works for me and I use those things for years. But the newest beauty product in my life is this niacinamide serum from The Ordinary, um, which I have to talk about because like for pretty much the last 10 years or so, I've not, not had a day where I didn't have any acne and um, this changed that. And this was my first summer using it and I usually get like really major skin problems in the summer with using like more SPF and sweating and humidity and stuff. Um, but my skin was pretty good thanks to this. And it's also like really cheap. It's only like six or seven bucks. If you are a skincare person at all or like have problem skin, this is worth a try because it it's cheap and for me it works. I, I have auto focus off. I'm not gonna do that because it won't show up. 
So honestly, TV has been disappointing me lately. A lot of shows came back this summer that were ones that I had loved, but they just came back with disappointing seasons. Um, infamously, Game of Thrones occurred. Stranger Things also came back, and I was really looking forward to that, but honestly, I was really disappointed in it. I just thought compared to what came before, it was like, kind of garbage. But what I did like about it was the ending, and I was like, oh, what a like sad but beautiful ending for this series. And then they teased another series, so... If what I think is happening is happening, it better not be. This is supposed to be about things that I liked. <laughs> of course, I come here and I complain about things I didn't like. Classic me. So probably my favorite thing that I watched this summer was season five of Schitt's Creek, which uh, went live on Netflix like at the end of May. And it was right around the time that Game of Thrones was wrapping up as well. And I remember just thinking like, wow, this silly show that has shit in the title is literally better on character development than this like multi-million dollar TV show with thousands and thousands of pages of source material to work off of. I just loved it. Um, it That show makes me laugh more than anything. It's like exactly my sense of humor and it also like made me cry and I just love the characters so much. Like uh, if you haven't watched Shit's Creek yet. I am envious of you because you get to watch it for the first time and just fall in love with this world and these people and go watch it right now. It'll probably come as a surprise to no one that my favorite book that I read this summer is Normal People by Sally Rooney. This is just kind of the story about two teenagers and their relationship starting in their last year of high school and moving through their three years of university. Or is it four years in Ireland? I don't remember. This has been hugely popular, so I'm not like cool for liking this at all, but I just like haven't stopped thinking about it since I finished it. I think that Sally Rooney is a true genius. This is one of those books that I really just want to know like how it works. Like how does she write stuff that is so accessible and yet so layered. Ugh, it's just so clever and emotional as well. Good stuff. At the end of May, Natalie Wynn of ContraPoints came out with this video called Beauty. She is a trans woman and she made this video in the months after her facial feminization surgery. And she talks at length in this video about women and beauty standards from a point of view that is very different from mine, but from an angle that I found very poignant and relatable. One of the points she explores in the video is the cognitive dissonance that comes from knowing that beauty standards are racist, fat phobic, and cisnormative, and yet still wanting to conform to those beauty standards, or at least in some way wanting to be able to like fit into beauty standards and the guilt and internal conflict that can arise from that cognitive dissonance. Her whole channel is great. She's in a little bit of trouble on twitter.com at the moment, <laughs> but I still really appreciate her and her content, and I really recommend checking out the channel ContraPoints if you're interested in politics, leftism, gender, diversity, any of those sorts of issues. Okay, so one podcast that I listened to in its entirety this summer that I really enjoyed was Dr. Death. Um, this is a podcast from Wonderly. It's a few months old now, like maybe, maybe it's been around for like over a year. Um, but it's kind of a true crime wacky story podcast. It's really easily bingeable. I think there are only like eight to 10 episodes. It's about this neurosurgeon named Dr. Dunch who basically like all of his patients ended up seriously injured or dead. And this journalist um, just like looks into how this happened and what kind of systems are in place that allowed this obviously horrible surgeon to continue working. It's really fascinating, kind of gruesome, very terrifying, but like totally compelling and enjoyable. And my favorite podcast episode of the summer was one from The Cut on Tuesdays called How to Do an Abortion. So this came out like right at the time 
when those really restrictive abortion bans were coming out in Alabama and Missouri and other states. And they interviewed women who had abortions in like the 60s before they were legal in the United States. They talked to a woman who led an organization that actually taught women how to do abortions in that time, which was absolutely fascinating. And then they also interviewed a woman who runs an organization today um, where she runs essentially an abortion clinic on a boat so they, she can go to countries where abortion is illegal and offer women that kind of care um, in a way that is legal because they're in international waters and that was mind-blowing. It's really emotional but incredible and it's totally worth listening to this episode even though it's not super zeitgeisty anymore. Obviously, most of the stuff that we read isn't in a book, it's online. And I read a lot of really good essays and short stories on the internet, so I thought I'd talk about a couple of them here today. One that I really liked came out at the end of July, and it's called Discriminating People by Maud Street. This was in The Cut, and it is a short story about a couple on their honeymoon in the Badlands. It's really atmospheric and kind of weird and just like really really good. And then an essay that I really enjoyed that I read online was A Year Without a Name by Cyrus Grace Dunham. This was in The New Yorker in August. This is an essay about the author's experience with gender and it's really sharp and informative and emotional and enlightening. And again, if you're interested in gender issues or just like good personal writing, I would recommend this one. So those are some of the things that I loved this summer. I'm sad to see summer 2019 go. Uh, I'm very anxious at the future right now. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that maybe I introduced you to something that you might want to check out. Please, let's have a conversation in the comments. I always love hearing from you guys. Please recommend TV shows to me because I feel like I've watched everything and I don't know how when there's so much content, nothing seems good. If, if you have a TV show that you like, that that you think I would like, please tell me because I'm looking for something new to watch. Anyway, thanks for sitting with me and chatting about these things. Uh, have a great day. Bye.